Hello everyone. You have to admit there is something fascinating, attractive and creepy about abandoned places. A few years ago it was crowded and full of life, but what's left now is dust and memories. Not surprisingly, many people are drawn into these forgotten places. Unfortunately, it's not so easy to get too many of them, but sometimes you don't have to. After all, you can go on a trip without even getting up from your favorite chair. Are you ready? Then let's get it on! Camelot Theme Park The story of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table is a very inspiring legend. There are so many movies and even cartoons about it. There are hotels and two restaurants in the style of King Arthur and of course amusement parks as well. In the English county of Lancashire, Camelot Theme Park was opened in 1983, which is located on an area approximately 57 hectares and includes many attractions both for children and adults. Everything was made in a medieval kind of style, and for many years the visitors were delighted. Sadly, even the coolest places can close. This happened to Camelot after almost 30 years of work. The park was shut down, the owners blame it on the bad weather and various events such as the Olympics which reduced the number of visitors. The park is now in a state of desolation and could well serve as a great location for a movie about the end of the world. The Mounsel Forts The Mounsel Forts are small towers at the mouth of the Thames that provided protection against air raids during World War II. Yes, they look a little bit too fragile to be military installations, but look, many years have passed and the forts are still standing. In fact, these are practically bunkers ready for any danger, and at the same time, almost independent of each other. Not surprisingly, these forts were responsible for destroying 22 planes, 30 flying bombs, and even contributed to the loss of one submarine. However, they were abandoned after the war and were used by pirate radio stations. Bodhi Not by chance, the ghost town of Bodhi in California is considered a national historical monument. All the buildings here are preserved in the same form in which they were left by people. It all started in 1859 when a certain William Bodie discovered large gold deposits in the area. William himself died the following year, but the city appeared near the deposits and began to grow very quickly. At first only 20 miners lived here, but by 1880 the population of Bodie had reached 10,000 people. By that time, the town was home to many families, bandits, workers, traders and visitors from all over the world. At one time, there were 65 saloons, several gambling houses and a lot of places with bad reputation. The city in general, a true big small town. Bodhi prospered from the end of 1877 to the middle and even the end of the 80s, but the gold reserves began to slowly run out. In Kamfel, people began to leave Bodhi. In 1917, the railway leading to Bodhi was closed. In 1942, the last mine and post office ceased to operate. Bodhi became a ghost town in the Wild West. Now there are about 110 buildings. Here visitors can walk through the deserted streets of the city, which used to be a busy area. Small pieces of porcelain dishes, square nails and small bottles scattered all over Bodhi. But it's forbidden to take anything out of this area. Even small items are given a legend that every item from the ghost town is cursed. Belgian Car Forest What do you expect to see in the woods? Forest animals and birds, of course. Maybe a cabin, easy. Perhaps an abandoned building. This is also possible, but definitely not a traffic jam. In the south of Belgium, not far from the town of Châtillon, in the thick forest, there is a cemetery of old cars. Vintage cars slowly grow rusty and fall apart among the beaches and oaks. But how did all of them get there? Well, according to legend, the cemetery of old cars appeared to American soldiers stationed at the area after the Second World War. Heads of their newly purchased cars, the cost of delivery to the US was way too high. But of course, the car owners didn't plan to abandon their purchases forever. They were going to take them out afterwards but also failed to do so. Year after year, the cars left outside gradually collapsed under the influence of time. Soon, this place became like a scene from an apocalypse movie. It looks like people sitting in traffic jams just left their cars to escape from some terrible danger. At some point, there are four car cemeteries and as many as 500 cars surround the Chet Salon. But today, there is only one abandoned area. It contains about 100 to 150 vehicles, some of which are very old models. However, there are newer cars as well, whose owners were in this area in later years. Statue Park in Japan 
Japanese parks are usually places of peace and tranquility. They are very beautiful. You can observe nature and think about the future, but not in this park in the Japanese city of Ashawa in Toyama Prefecture. Of course you can relax, but be prepared for a constant strange feeling as if someone were watching you. For example, hundreds of stones. There are about 800 stone statues here, many of which probably represent real people. They are incredibly detailed and even dressed in different clothes. Creepy, of course. They are about the most important thing that this part is completely abandoned in 1989. The statues are made by a Chinese sculptor for a local businessman, Wutsawu Farakawa. He spent more than $54 million on that in this way he would be able to immortalize his name and the memory of all the people he loved. But after the businessman's death, the sculpture part quickly fell into disrepair. For a while it was forgotten by everyone until one day a photographer came across the scary sculptures and mentioned them in his blog. Since then, tourists have started visiting the park. Bourbon Tunnel The Bourbon Tunnel is an ancient underground passage constructed for military purposes to connect the royal palace to military barracks in Naples, Italy. The monarchy in the era of King Ferdinand II of Bourbon was fearful of the revolution-prone populace of Naples. Erico Alvino was commissioned to construct a military passage for the troops, connecting the royal palace of Naples to the Via Morelli, boring underneath the hill of Pizzo Falcon and reaching the quartier of San Ferdinando, but also connecting to other tunnels and aqueducts, including the old Camigano aqueduct. The monarchy would not have been ignorant that the Viceroy of Naples in 1647 had nearly been trapped in this urban royal palace and only by luck was able to flee to the nearby convenant to escape angry crowds during the revolt of Marsanello. Thus the tunnel was also able to serve as an escape route for its royal inhabitants. Two years after it was begun, the fall of the Bourbon dynasty meant that the construction came to a halt. During the Second World War, the tunnel was used as a shelter during bombardments. Presently, the tunnels are open for tours, and with catacombs of Naples, the urge to go underground. And with much of Napoleon construction, a kinship with decay and fruitless architecture in Naples. The tunnel contains decades of debris, including vintage cars and a discarded fastest monument that has been made for Aurelio Padovani. Duke of Lancaster Abandoned ships are as impressive as abandoned cities and buildings. A British ship, the Duke of Lancaster, was built in 1956 to become a passenger ferry and cruise ship. Now that's multitasking. As a ferry, the ship traveled mainly between Haysham and Belfast. But as a cruise ship, it could travel to Denmark, Belgium, Norway, the Netherlands and Spain. Since the mid-1960s, passenger ships such as the Duke of Lancaster have been gradually replaced by car ferries. However, the Duke was used until 1978, then it was finally taken out of service and since then it's been quietly rusting. It is said that the first of Welsh authorities were going to turn it into a large hotel with 300 rooms. Then the Duke was going to become one of the largest airport gallery and it was almost done. The ship is covered with various graffiti and famous artists participated in decoration. But unfortunately, in 2017, both sides of the ship were painted black. Since then, the Duke is just slowly collapsing. Wellington Power Station Coal-fired power plants can't be called environmentally friendly. They emit millions of tons of greenhouse gases and toxic particles into the atmosphere. That's why there is a need to reduce the number of coal-fired facilities. The Wellington power plants were built in the late 50s and early 60s in Derbyshire, England. The two power plants had a capacity of 804 megawatts and were unique among the UK power plants, but even this did not save the plant from closing down. In 1999, the power plants were decommissioned and have since then just been inactive, of course. Some people want to demolish the buildings, but so far nothing has been done. Aldridge Station Aldridge is a closed station on the London Underground, located in the city of Westminster in central London. It was opened in 1907 with the name Strand, after the street on which it is located, and was the terminus of the short Piccadilly line, branched from Holborn that was a relic of the merger of the two railway schemes. The station building is close to the Strand's junction with the Surrey Street and near Aldridge. During its lifetime, the branch was subject of a number of unrealized extension proposals that would have seen the tunnels through the station extended southwards, usually to Waterloo. 
Served mostly by a shuttle train and having low passenger numbers, the station and the branch were considered for closure several times. Service was offered only during the weekday, peak hours from 1962, and discontinued in 1994, when the cost of replacing the lifts was considered too high for the income generated. Disused parts of the station and the running of tunnels were used during both world wars to shelter artworks from London's public galleries and museums after bombing. The station has long been popular as a filming location and has appeared as itself, and as other London underground stations in a number of films. Due to its historical significance, the station is a Grade 2 listed building. Well, that's all we have for you for today. Anyone can plan an extravagant vacation to a massive metropolis, but what about venturing to a ghost town? A destination where Mother Nature, the economy, or a combination of the two has dwindled the population to nothing.